All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the opportunity for another day of life. We pray, Father, that you would encourage us as we go through this day, that you would uh, help us to always strive to uh, to promote the truth and uh, and to re always to strive to honor and glorify you as we do that. Father, again, thank you for, for loving us. Thank you for giving us uh, the, the gift of your Son. We know, Father, that only through Him can we have access to you. This morning, Father, as we study, I pray, Father, that you'll help us to be honest with ourselves, that you'll help us to apply the things that we learn, and that we'll truly look intently at our own lives and, and ask ourselves, are we doing the things that we should be doing personally? Father, and as we worship, as we get to the honor and privilege of, of worshiping together as a community of believers, I pray, Father, that you bless us and that you encourage us, that our worship will go up to you and be pleasing to you, and that uh, it will be an encouragement to those that are here. Thank you, Father, for blessing us. Thank you for bringing us here. And thank you for, for all the blessings that you shower us each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the first part of chapter 4, uh, Paul has been telling Timothy why it was so important for Timothy and then, and I think even preachers today, and teachers today now, to take seriously this charge. Remember, you know, he said that your audience is God and the Son, and the son that they are the ones watching you. And, uh, and he said that, that, uh, that these hearers depend on them. Are going to depend on us, going to depend on you, going to depend on us whether we're teachers, preachers, whatever. They're going to depend on us to teach them the truth. There's a the, this morning we are going to look at at the the, the hearers that uh, he's going to talk about in in, uh, in verse three and four and, and on. But I want us to, I want to read the first five verses again. So for those of you who just walked in, we're in Second Timothy chapter four. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 5 again. Uh, now, listen to what it says here. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. Now, let's talk about these hearers for a, for a while. We're in that time now. So the time will come, we're in that time now where people are looking to have put people around them that will tell them what they want to hear. What do you think uh, what do you think these people are looking for? Tell me what you think they're looking for. It says that, that that will tell them what their itching ears want to hear or tickle their ears. What do you think they're looking for? Tell me what you think. Yes. They're looking for validation, not salvation. Validation, not salvation. Good point. Anybody else? What do you think they're looking for? What is? What do you think is a uh, is an identifying trait of this person? And I mean, I'm going to ask you. You know, how can I make sure that I'm not one of these people? They're, they're looking for if they can sin and still make it to heaven. Okay. All right. Anybody else? What do you think? Approval. Approval. Okay. Explain. Approval. Well. <clears throat> they want to live a certain lifestyle and they want everybody else to agree with it and say your lifestyle is okay. They want to live a certain kind of lifestyle and they want approval. And you can find teachers that will help, that will tell you what it is that you're looking for. If you look long enough, you can find them. You'll find someone that will, that will make you feel good about yourself. That will make you, I, I wrote a couple of notes down here, uh, that will entertain you. You know, we, we, uh, I had someone at one point years back said, we need to entertain them. And I said, entertain them? For what? They can go to a concert. They can go to they can go to a movie. We're not here to entertain you. If that's what you're looking for, 
you've come to the wrong place because we're not here to entertain you. You may be entertained, all right, in some sense by what happens here, but that's not our goal. All right? Our goal is teach the truth. That's our goal. That should be the that should be the goal of every every teacher, preacher, even every one of us as individuals. I'm gonna I'm gonna stand on the truth. Now, you know, uh, for approval, that's great. Yes, ma'am. Linda? I was just gonna say, we forget that worship is honoring God. We think we've come to be gratified or I mean we are uplifted, we come with the right motives anyway, but we forget we're not here to entertain Okay, we're here to glorify God. Anybody else? What do you think these people what what are they what what are who are they what are they like? These people that are looking for have their ears tickled. To, to tickle their itching ears. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hold on. Barbara, go ahead. It's all about them. All about them. It's not what they can do for anyone okay. else. Okay. It's all about them. All right. Larry? What I was gonna say is it's kind of like you were saying a while ago, it's just to confirm what they think. Okay. That's what they want. They want you to confirm what they think. Okay. All right. They want anybody else? Come yes. Or they want you to hear just what what they want them to hear. Okay. They want you to hear. Okay. All right. You're talking about you're talking about maybe the preachers or teachers that they're going to teach them what what they want. You can you can motivate people to believe whatever you want them to believe. That's right. If you if you're if you work at it right the right way, you're not going to tell them. Teach, you know, that's not all of them. But we were talking about those teachers like that, and those preachers and and individuals that can say what people want to hear. And there's whole there's whole groups built on on that 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 ideology that that uh. Money making, seeker sensitive, progressive minded. You know, we're going to be progressive minded. You know, we're going to we're going to accept all people. We're going to accept all different stages of life and all different kinds of of activities and people, all kinds of moralities. And we're going to make a place that's inclusive for all of them. Inclusive for all of them. What about the truth? Where does the truth come in? Because if you look at the progression here, what does it say? They're looking for teachers that will tickle their ears, and then look at what the next part of this is. And said. They will turn their ears away from truth. What happens when you start when you when you start to listen to what it is that makes you feel good, makes you feel comfortable, makes you feel encouraged, you know, makes you feel entertained? What happens then? I'm going to do. I'm going to say. I'm going to be a part of everything that my parents were a part of because that makes me feel good. Whether it's right or not, it doesn't matter. And you turn away from the truth. Why is that so detrimental to turn away from the truth? Why is that so much so detrimental? And do you think the truth matters? People today are saying, I've heard them say I've, I, that you know that, that it's really not relevant anymore because there's a new truth. You know, we we can find a new truth now. Really? Yeah, Larry. They say that's your truth. Yeah. So what you were saying earlier that they want to they want to say that they want to encourage it's all inclusive. Okay. Well, so do we. Mm -hmm. But when you get here and when you learn the truth. Yes. Yeah. Stay in that lifestyle. Se Second Thessalonians chapter two says that these people were destroyed and they were lost because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. <clears throat> truth matters, guys. You understand? Truth matters. Now, doesn't mean that we've got all the truth, but we should be faced going towards the truth. What is that going to mean in my life? What is it going to mean that I'm going towards the truth? I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to say, okay, it doesn't really matter what I was taught before. Let me line it up with the book. Okay, let me. I'm going to line it up with the book and see what does the book say. Do you believe that this is true? Do you believe that this is true? Why? Why do you believe it's true? There are people in here looking at me, and they're expecting you. They want you to explain to them because they're not sure that they ain't got there yet, that this is true. How do you know it's true? It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. How do you know that? How do you know it's the Word of God? How do you know it's truth? There are a lot of people out there that say it's not. They're filled with inconsistencies and errors and all kinds of metaphors that don't mean nothing about nothing. That's what they say. A lot of people out there say that. Or they take Scripture out of context and they twist it and turn it to say what, it, what they want it to say to fit an agenda. Okay? How do you know it's truth or not? How do you know it's God's Word? How do you know? That's why you have to read it yourself. Okay. I could. That's why people will believe a lie because it's easier. 
Okay. They don't want to, 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 to believe the truth. You actually have to work at it. Okay. You have, have to put in effort. It's like, all right, the perfect diet would be like, they, they say, oh, eat healthy and exercise. That's all well and good, but you know what? There's tacos. I want a taco. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie. It's the truth. <laughs> but that's my version of the truth. But, you know, one taco is not going to hurt. <laughs> Five tacos would be better. But, uh, one taco not going to hurt. Works for me. But, it's, not, <laughs> but it, it's, it, it's a a slope you go down like if you start to believe one oh, line on is not put in oh, on it. Look at the next part of this. Look at the next part. This is the slope that it goes down. Look yeah. at the next, what it said. And turning aside to myths. Turning aside to things that are not true. Turning aside to fairy tales, to, to fables. That's what happens. When you abandon truth, what happens? You know, there's truth here. The, the truth is, if you're going to eat healthy, you have to abandon some of these things that are really good and really, you know, you really want to be an I can't do that anymore because the truth of the matter is, this is not healthy for me, right? Yeah. But if you say, well, one's good, five would be better, what's one day, I'll just do this. Yeah. And you turn aside to things that are not true. It's not true that, that five is good when one is not. You see? So so you we turn, and when you put that in a spiritual sense, in a, in a biblical sense, when you start turning away from the truth and turn to myths, what happens? What happens? What becomes what becomes truth to you? <coughs> what becomes truth? That this this ideology that maybe you can't back up a scripture becomes truth to you. There's a lot of people in our world today that that's what, where they're at. They believe they believe something that's a lie. They believe doctrinal error because that's what they want to believe. I believe once saved, always saved. That's a good, that's a doctrinal stance that I want to adopt. Okay? I have to turn away from the truth to promote that ideology and to stand on that as truth. I can't go by the book because because you can go in the book and find 50 scriptures that, that kick that right in the teeth. Okay? But they that's what they want. They want it. I, so I have to abandon the truth. I have to turn away from the truth to put these doctrinal ideologies in place and make them truth for me. Yes? They either turn or they add to it. Yeah. Because to follow that that once saved, always saved. At the end of that, when you confronted with that, they say, well, they never believed. Mm -hmm. Well, see, now you've added something. There you go. It wasn't there. Yeah. It doesn't save you. They never believed. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, we can step off into the Church of Christ stuff, too, if you want. You know? We can step off into the instrumental music thing. Okay? You want to step into this stuff and make it, make it a doctrinal absolute and I've heard all the arguments. You can do that if you want. You know, I mean, we're do, we do the same thing, guys. We abandon what the book says to promote our to promote an ideology or a doctrinal stance that we've taken for years. Y'all you know, remember I've told y'all about that where Fortran was at at one point, almost split over. Tell me if I'm wrong. Almost split over, covering over the communion elements. Because when they got in their new building, they took the, the, the sheet off of the communion element, don't need anymore, and people got, got mad. The truth was that this was necessary. It was a necessary part of worship. And they almost split over that. You know, that's where we get to sometimes when we abandon truth. Somebody had their hand up one, though. Oh, there you go. Could it be that people are forget how to trust, like lose trust in some things, and then you, when you lose trust? Did, did y'all hear what she said? She said, can it be that we lose trust? Trust in what? Trust in who? To have trust, for your children to trust you, you've got to prove that they can trust you, yeah. right? You, they, you've got to earn that. Any parent does. You have to earn that, that they can trust you, that I'm not going to let put you out in the street and abandon you to whatever. You may act like I need you to, need to do that, but I'm not going to do that. They try, you have to earn that. So I have to let God earn my trust in what he says, what he's written. I've got to figure out how do I do that, what is he saying, and how am I going to apply this to my life. If I'm, a, if I'm someone that wants their ears tickled, I don't really care what he says. 
I just want to make sure that somebody tells me what I want to hear. That this, that, well, 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 and you can take the scripture and twist it all over the place and make it say what you want it to say. If you're talking to people that don't know the book, it's really easy. Let me tell you, it's really easy to convince someone of what they believe is a lie if they don't know what the truth is. That's why it's so important. Yes, ma'am. What came to my mind immediately when we start talking about this is John 8, 31 and 32. Mm -hmm. You shall know the truth, mm -hmm. and the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. There's freedom in believing what the Word says. Yeah. The problem here is, is do I believe it's the Word? Yeah. Do I believe that it's God's Word? Do I believe it's inspired? You, you're not going to base truth. You're not going to base what you believe truth if, you, if you're not sure the document is valid. Yes. Go ahead, Mark. You know, he, he starts out with telling to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And then the verse we hadn't got to yet, he's like, look at me. Mm -hmm. I finished the race. Yep. So we're going to get there in a minute. Teachers have to live a life to prove the trustfulness and the truthworthiness of the scriptures. I, and I think I think if you leave it in the text and it talks about Timothy, a charge for Timothy. And I said last week, I think we all need to listen to this. All of us, in a sense, are teachers. We may be teaching children, we may be teaching people at work, we may be teaching whatever. But we're all teachers. And so we need to look at this as well. We may not have the same the same charge to us and the same responsibility as an evangelist or a minister or someone who's been called to that place. But you still, how many of, every one of us in here has someone in our life that we can teach, right? And we need to listen to this text. You know, am I going to teach them the truth? Do I know the truth? Am I going to stand for truth? You know, and what, what were you saying just a minute ago? Oh, yeah, he, he's finished the race. Well, what this progression is, I'm going, I'm, these pre people are going to put things in place with no biblical doctrine at all. And I, my question was, the question I wrote down is, how can you keep this from happening to you? How can you make sure this doesn't happen to you? Whether it's from that pulpit, whether it's behind this podium, whether it's on TV, radio, whatever, how can you make sure it doesn't happen to you? Somebody said it a while ago. You know, I mean, I got to trust, okay? You can't trust what you don't know. You know, you got to read. Read it for yourself and research. Okay. And make All right. Sure. Got to read it and got to search. Okay. That's really difficult to do. And I, I agree with you, but that's really difficult to do when you don't believe the book is real. Very when you don't believe the book is God's word and you haven't gone to that place yet to figure out, is it God's word or not? You know, then it's going to be really difficult for you to buy into what he's saying. Especially when it contradicts what people around you, a life and blood, somebody flesh and bone is telling you and said. Well, they're smarter than I am, they must know. Did you check out everything Rudy Ray said when he was when he was here preaching? Did you? Did it sound good? Sound awesome to me. Man, I was sitting back there with a notepad and a pen, couldn't write nothing because I was in awe. My mouth was open catching flies. Yeah, you know, I was just I was in awe. You know, I believe everything that man said come out of his mouth. Everything. Because it was who he was. I mean, the stature of him. You know what I know now? He was flawed. Oh, God forbid. He was flawed. And sometimes he and I did not agree because of, of the flaws that we both had. So, you know, when you look at this, you say, okay, what can you, what, if you, if you, if reading and studying and, and analyzing, that's all good. The first thing you have to do is come to an understanding, is it God's word or not? And how do I get to that point? Okay, anybody else? What do you think? How, how can you make sure this doesn't happen to you? What can you do? Pray. Like, pray. Pray. I got. I sat at lunch. We were in uh, Molden. Got at lunch with you know some guys. Mm -hmm. Took my hat off and I, you know, I prayed. He's like, "Man, mm -hmm. you know what? I need to do that more." I was like, "What? Like you take your hat off?" So, you know, he's like, "No, pray." I go, "Oh," and it felt good. They noticed it. I yeah. mean, like you yeah. know, and they they just kind of appreciate it because in the atmosphere that a lot of us men work in, it's not like I don't know if it's like you know they they, 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 they don't, you don't do it because you don't want to seem weak or whatever. I don't know if it's, it's not really weak, but I think it takes a lot more strength to be the, you know, the minority, not the minority of like the ones that are uh, not afraid to like, you know. Hold on, hold on. Stop. You hear what he's saying? He's a baby in Christ. Yes. Okay, just was baptized. He thought he knew all his life and now he's saying, whoa, wait a minute. I did, and he's baptized and there's no embarrassment here. It's, it's, I mean, he's like a little child. You know, get on his bike and he's pedaling in the street. He don't care. Man, I'm going, God, this is awesome. I learned how to ride my bike. It's awesome. You hear him? 
Yes. And then we get to our age, and we're looking around seeing if anybody's watching. Because we're embarrassed to take off our hat and pray. And we get to that point. You know, if I if I get to that place and it starts to take hold in my life, I am going to be one of those people who are going to look for somebody and say, well, it doesn't really matter if you pray like that. It doesn't really matter if you do that in public. You know, God knows what's in your heart, so you just pray silent in your heart. You don't really have to show it to anybody. I can find a teacher that'll teach me that. Can't you? I can teach me what teach him what makes me feel comfortable. He's looking at it saying, I don't care. <laughs> I wouldn't pay attention whether you were looking or not. He didn't like care. The soldier of Christ Jesus, like you know, Second Timothy chapter two, he's mm-hmm. like, you know, you're not he's like so you don't have to go out there and fight, you know, like but you know, you need to be like showing through Absolutely. your actions. And, Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. So you hear what he you hear what he's doing, you hear what Bender says. So what is it for you? What do you what do you do to make sure this doesn't happen to you? That you don't become someone who has itching ears, want somebody that's gonna tickle their ears. You know, we've we've had people that have got up and left before since Cole got here. Got up and left. Said, I'm not going. Y'all, y'all are not teaching the truth. And Cole tried to go through all of it with him and he we wasn't didn't wasn't have it. You know why? Because we he did not adhere to standard Church of Christ doctrine. The truth. The truth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the truth. And and he thought it was this guy thought it was the truth until he left. You know, him and his family left. Okay, you know, what were you gonna say, Kevin? I was gonna say right now is is a time in our society where morals are placed upon us from every single angle, mm-hmm. and we're not even exactly expecting it, mm-hmm. and it's born in it's ingrained into us. And the thing is that a lot of these things seem like good morals. Yeah, they seem like good morals. Mm-hmm. Equality. You know, uh, all these, all these things. Inclusivity. Inclusivity. Yeah. All these things. Diversity. Diversity. All these things sound like good things, but are they? Are they, are they adhering to our actual, the definitions within the Bible? And if you don't know that book, you won't know for sure because you'll listen to somebody that has an eloquence about them. They can tell you, well, that, let me tell you what it says. And they will use our own scripture against us, That's exactly just like right. the devil. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you have to know the book. You have to know if it's God's word for sure. You have to study, make sure it is. You have to know what the word says. And you have to put teachers in front of you that are going to teach you what the truth is. And you're going to hold them accountable. I don't care if you're sitting across the breakfast table with them. If somebody says something across the table that you know is not true, at some point what you have to do is either stop sitting across the table from them or change their mind. Okay? At some point, you have to you have to decide, I'm not gonna do this anymore. Okay? Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna listen to this anymore. You know, and if you don't put teachers in your life that will teach you the truth, then what's gonna happen to you? Follow the lie. You'll follow the lie. And you'll turn into someone that's doing this. What obstacles do you face? What obstacles? H- hold on a minute. You know, sometimes there'll be, Satan will put obstacles that are very subtle. Okay? I don't know where this has come from. Right? I have no idea. But I know that there's a distraction in this room right now. Okay? And for somebody in this room, it may be that Satan is, doesn't want you to hear what I'm having to say. And so he's put a distraction here. Okay? I don't know if that's true or not. But I gotta I gotta say, what if? What if? So what are the obstacles that you face? I've got a I've got a wife or I've got a husband that doesn't believe. And it's easier and it's and it's calmer, and it's just easier just to go along with the flow. Doesn't matter if it goes against the doesn't matter if it goes against the truth or not. Doesn't matter. All that matters is I just want peace in my house. Okay? Don't care what the book said. I just need peace in my life. I've, I've been to, or I've, I've heard of funerals of people who are non-believers, and <laughs> they are given. Oh, I'm, they're in heaven, mm-hmm. and it's like that's comforting, and that's what you want to hear, and it might sound nice, but it's not true. Yeah. The one thing. The one thing that that uh, that. You know that a good teacher, a good preacher, a good evangelist, whatever, is going to find a way not to judge people, not to go into that place, not to go in that arena. 
okay? Only teach them the truth. You know, I was, I was, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the funeral that Cole and I just did, I was really, I, I was really encouraged because if you've never listened to Cole do a funeral, uh, he has no qualms about telling you what the truth is. He'll tell you straight up. He doesn't care if you're, if you're been a member of the church your whole life or whatever. He's not going to deal with you. He's going to deal with you at the beginning, deal with you at the end. But in the middle, he's going to deal with everybody in that room and tell them what they need to hear. Whether they like it or not. And sometimes they don't like it. Sometimes he's gotten clocked for it. Before it got finished, he got clocked. I mean, they clocked him as before he was finished. They somebody got up and just and you know, and I and I look at go ahead and then I'll get to this next part. Look at what's said. In any learning situation, your biggest obstacle is what you already know that isn't true. Okay. <laughs> Listen to what he says next in verse 5. Look at what he said. But you, keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge the duties of your ministry. Now you're talking specifically to Timothy. But he, actually, he could also, this text, you know, I could have read this text to Cole right after that, that funeral. He called me and told me what happened. And you know, I said, geez, dude, I'm so sorry for you, man. You know, it was fine because what he did was he did exactly what this verse said. He kept his head, kept his head in that situation. It was a negative, ungodly, unholy situation. He kept his head. He didn't lash out, didn't respond, didn't retaliate. He just stood there and took it. He took it on the chin. He didn't just take it on, on the chin. He, he dotted his eyes, both eyes, and bloodied his nose. That's how bad it was. And he says here, he said, but you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. That's exactly what it, Pam, is that not what happened? Did he not do this? You were there. And it was and it was uncomfortable for you, wasn't it? It was horrible. And it says, endure hardship. And he said, do the work of an evangelist. What was what's the job? What do you want the, an evangelist job to be? What do you want it to be? Tell me what you want it to be. Preach the law. Preach the truth. Preach the law. Right? Somebody else? Proclaim the truth. What else? What else do you want an evangelist to do? Now, most a lot of preachers will not will not consider themselves evangelists. Okay, they will consider them just just preachers or pastors or, or whatever. You know, they call themselves pastors. I can't stand when they do that because that's not what they are. That's not what the word says. The word there's no there's no place in the book. Listen to me. There's no place in the book where a preacher was called a pastor. You understand that? You, you, do you understand that? So when you hear this, all these places, well, pastor of so-and-so. Man, don't call, don't call me a pastor because I preach. I'm a pastor because I'm an elder in the Lord's church. That's what the word means. All right? And I hear that, and I, and that may be subtle to you. That may be just a little insignificant. It's not insignificant. When you start to take the scripture and twist it and turn it and make it twist it just a little bit, just off-center, <clears throat> all it has to be is off-center of a, a little bit. And then you can twist it some more and be off centered even more. So, you know, when you when you look at this, and he said, "I ask you, what do you want your evangelist to be? What do you want? What do you want him to do? Tell me what you want him to do." Yes, ma'am. Preach the truth in love and not in condemnation. Okay. Like, all right. You know, those, those, get those, you know, preachers that might get up there and be like. You're all going to hell. <laughs> Maybe true. It might be true. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah. Well, yeah. you follow that if you don't. So, so the common theme is the common thread here is to teach the truth. Is that is that what you're telling me? What else? What do you want? What do you want your your evangelist or an evangelist? What do you want them what, to do? I, I, I unashamed. Said, what, huh? Unashamed. Unashamed. Okay. Yeah. Unashamed. There's a lot of people that are that are embarrassed of this book. Huh. They're embarrassed of it. Yeah. It doesn't fall in line with today's society and therefore it's old and it's buddy duddy. And, well, we got to we got to modernize it. And it's no longer relevant. It's no longer re relevant. I hear that a lot. Alex Cooper said the most rock and roll thing he ever did was become a Christian. The most like, you know, Alex Cooper, he's like sitting there, exactly. that's the most <laughs> exactly. rock and roll thing he ever did. It's like, you know, he's like preach the word, you know, like, you know, any chance he gets, he like proclaims, you know, mm -hmm. he does in Christ. Yep. And like, you know, that's like everybody's like, man, mm -hmm. you know, you look at him 
<laughs> yeah, but like, you know, you, I just remember his song, School's Out for Summer. <laughs> but that's, you know, that, that's something that's really awesome. Like, and like, whether like, he's true or not, whether yeah. he's, that's between him and God. Yeah. It that's is, between that means, him and God. You know, if, but, you know, when you when you look at what do I want an evangelist to be, you know, I want him to teach the truth. Yeah. I want him not be ashamed. I want him to, I want him to uh, to follow up with that with that truth, I want him to live the truth. If he can't live the truth, then he's not going to be able to preach the truth. He's got to be able to live it. Now, not according not according to your standard, maybe. You know, well, because a lot of times people are going to look at at somebody and say, "I I don't like what he's saying. I'll find something wrong with his lifestyle." Man, you can find something wrong with everybody's lifestyle. Look in the mirror sometimes. <clears throat> And ask yourself if there's not something wrong with the lifestyle of that person sit, looking back at you. You know, God tells us not to judge. But we we have, we are fruit inspectors, but we have to be about, about studying and preaching and elevating the truth. What's the truth? I don't want, I don't want to be one that dies and is, and is lost because I did not have a love for the truth. What is it going to look like for you to have a love for the truth? What is that going to look like? The obstacles aside, whatever the obstacles are, you know, Satan's going to put all kinds of stuff on our path to keep you from doing what you're doing, okay, or what you know you need to do. You know, how am I going to fall in love with the truth when you can't even find five minutes to read on a daily basis? Tell me how you're going to do that. How will you find, how will you find time? I mean, how can you fall in love with the truth if you can't find five minutes a day or ten minutes a day or something? And, and I hear all kinds of excuses. I have, I've said them to myself. How are you going to do that? How are you how are you not going to become what these people are if you're not willing if you don't have the uh, you don't have this the power I mean the the the, the desire the determination to just put some time aside for God? Yeah, Tasha. Untangling something that's been learned that was wrong is is something that it, I think an evangelist should should do. I've been homeschooling Levi Stevens um, in language arts. And for <coughs> basic, simple ABCs, he sings it HRJK. And I'm like, wait, what? And all of his five years, he's learned HRJK. Nobody caught on. And so for me to show him the ABCs on print and all of that, it doesn't matter. That's the way he learned it. And yeah. so now the, the act of trying to prove to him that it's not HRJK. <laughs> <laughs> but that, and that, you understand why the, why the Cole's job, my job, Dan's job, why our job, why your job is so hard because people have been ingrained, they've been twisted in with this un, with this stuff. That, and I can stand up here all day long and say, well, this is wrong. This is not, and you're going, I don't know. You know, what am I going to say about my family? What about my grandparents? Yes, ma'am. Um, at an early age in education, Yeah, you hear that? See, they, they, we've, we've taught children to be tolerant, okay? And now there's a disconnect when you hear the truth, because the truth sometimes is not tolerant. Would you say that's true? It's not tolerant at all. Yeah. Well, it's not tolerant to, it's not to, tolerant to error, that's for sure. If there's something that's not right that goes against biblical text, the truth that's not very tolerant at all. God was not tolerant to, to uh, we, did, uh, we did Deuteronomy chapter 4 uh, Friday night. And I pulled all the text out of it. Talk, God says you better obey this. If you obey this, it's going to happen. If you do obey this, it's going to happen. Well, and we looked at it, and I said, and I did it because because this was part of our reading. And I wanted them to see what does it look like? Where did you? And there was some things that they didn't see, I think. Some things that I pulled out they, that, that, that they didn't know. But, you know, when I'm looking at this, I'm going, and I look at what, what Paul says here. Uh, he said, he says, make sure that you do the job and do the work of your, what your ministry duties are. What is your ministry duty? The first and foremost in your in your call to God is to go and proclaim the gospel. That's your job. That's what it says in Matthew. It's not my job, not Cole's job. It's our job, right? Our job. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, you hear me all the time say when I get up there to do the communion thought. Hey, if you're going to give your money, this is what we're doing with you. We're going out teaching and saving souls. That's what we're doing. You know, I mean, if it. If uh, if we had a thousand people here on Wednesday and you had any part at all, any I mean any even that much part, if you gave fifty bucks, you gave ten bucks, and you just came over 
and just came and just to visit with people. One of these days we may have a chance. Who knows? We may have a chance to touch somebody's life. And they may remember the hot dog y'all served them. They remember, may remember the, the, the silly outfit that, that Brent had on. Or that may, or they may look at, 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 uh, at uh, you know, the police department. I mean, the police were there and giving out candy. And the kids, I had one little kid that, was, that came in. He was dressed as a cop. And I said, have you talked to the policeman over there? And he said, really? I said, he'll take a picture with you. Go ahead. And I looked over around there, and he was over there taking a picture with that, with that little bitty boy. You know, I mean, how much impact do you think that's going to make? That happened here, guys. That happened here. You know why? Because we're trying to teach the truth. And sometimes it has to be subtle. Sometimes I can't. It's not about an evangelist getting in your face and sucking you with a book. Sometimes it's about him caressing you or a church caressing us. You know, we have an opportunity now to do to do something, you know, that we didn't even know about. We just found out about it the other day. And we, we, may, we may get involved in that. And it will be something you may not even hear about. It, but it will be something subtle. That will happen here, and it'll be a good thing, and it'll proclaim the truth. That's what you want of your evangelist, isn't it? Isn't that what you want? Yeah. That you can know that when I walk down the street and I say, "Well, I'm so with the Church of Christ," they're gonna say, "Oh," I, and I had this happen one time. A guy was was sitting in my Bible study on a Tuesday night. He's sitting there, and he said, "What's your name?" I told him. And he said, and he thought he said, "This," and he talked and said the guy's name. Does he go there? And I said, "Yeah, he does." One of our song leaders. And he said, I'll never come there. I'll never come there as long as I live. I said, why? He said, because I know what he's like away from there. By that time, he'd already gone. He wasn't there anymore. And I wasn't an elder anyway. I couldn't do anything. But, you know, I mean, it was, and I'm going, God, I hope nobody ever says that about me. If nobody ever says that, that I, that I was the cause of them never coming back. Because one of these days, who's the audience? Who's the audience, guys? Look at verse 1. Who's the audience? God is. We're going to have to stand for him and answer for that. Okay? You know, and then, oh, damn, I ran out of time. <laughs> I wanted to get to where you were at. I ran out of time. I tell you what, we'll review this next week and we'll get to it. I want to see, I want you to see what Paul says because I think it's important for us, you know, that we're here. This is a, this is a challenge. To do what we do is a challenge. All right? How many of you, when you got home Wednesday night, were tired? Wore out? Boom. I mean, slap dab wore out. But it was a fun war. But you see, yeah, it but was this, fun. this is part of the race. It's part of the challenge that it is. Yes, ma'am. And we did have some people come through who were gracious and famous. So much. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's that's awesome. You know? So anyway, guys, we'll pick this up next week. We'll start right there and we'll pick it up about what Paul's responding. 